very challenging set of problems. They run to the heart of, of the ultimate human problem, I think, which is, which is what is truth? What, what is real? And how do we know? Uh, and I, you know, when I was growing up, I, I was raised on a remote cattle ranch in Wyoming. We had a one-room schoolhouse, and there was a there was an 1886 Encyclopedia Britannica. We had other books, but that was the somebody had donated this old Encyclopedia Britannica, which was on onion skin and, and was about the size of a horizontal deep freeze in terms of the space it took up. And you go to a part of that in one of those books, and, and you get to chemistry, say, and they would then tell you everything that was then known about chemistry. Some anonymous person would set forth to, to lay out all that was known on that subject. And they did this quite seriously. And, you know, between that and the fact that it was the 50s and there was, there was the notion that, that authority was God-given and that there was a truth and somehow there was a system of of wisdom that came down on human beings, uh, especially all the people in my little town who were older than me. Uh, I didn't think about it much. But then, uh, 47 years ago, last week, I was in college, and three things happened. In the early part of the week, somebody gave me a little purple pill that contained LS LSD. And my notion of what was real and how much of it I was bringing to bear myself was suddenly profoundly altered. Uh, if, if reality could be so fundamentally changed by something that small, you'd be asking all kinds of questions about it. And I was still pretty shaken by that. And later in the week, I went to a, a lecture by Karl Popper, who was famous for having written elegantly and well about the scientific method. And I took a huge amount of, of comfort in what he said, you know, the whole method by which we, we collectively determine the truth. Reproducible results, system of vet, system of reputation. Uh, but I immediately started thinking about the academics around me and, and was, again, discouraged at the guild and the, and the way in which the reputation uh, was very competitive and harsh and many truths were not received or allowed to be received. Uh, and, and at the end of the week, somebody gave me a copy of a book called The Phenomenon of Man by uh, Tyre de Chardin, which I started reading. And, and Pierre Tyre de Chardin was a Jesuit uh, priest and evolutionary theorist who had the idea that the evolutionary process had a teleology whereby the, the most rudimentary processes of life were being layered in increasingly complex ways and it reached a point where life was about to leave carbon basis or build a new layer that was above the carbon basis that was entirely of mind but was an ecology of thought would have an ecosystem of mind, of what was known. And this affected me deeply, and it, and it rattled around in my head during 20 years when I went back to Wyoming and had a cattle ranch. Uh, and just you know, was running cattle around and thinking about a lot of the things that I discovered. And in 85, I, I discovered the internet, and, the, and it was another one of those religious moments where I thought, God, here's the nervous system for the great collective organism of mind. Here it is being built. And, and we must see to it that, 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 that this environment is, is kept biologically robust in all the ways that we would see to keeping any other ecosystem biologically robust. With, with, with diversity, with openness, with flows of energy, with capacity to edit uh, extraneous connection. We need to think a lot about how life and thought were, were related. And these are, these are hard problems because in this evolutionary way, unlike previous ones, the ability of the evolving thing 
to change the course of evolution is, is a very tight loop. And that's what you guys are doing. Trying to figure out the digestive system for all of human thought so that we can collectively know some things and have a sense of what is real that we all believe in, what the consensus of six or seven billion people can come up with with all of our best efforts. And this moment is, is here at hand. We now have the means, I think, for everybody on the planet to know as much as he or she wants to about anything. But the way in which that's done has to be done on the basis of an, of an evolving authority, an evolving set of connections and perceptions and views and editorial processes that you folks are thinking deeply about and not enough other people are. And I'm really very proud to be associated with you. I'm sorry I couldn't have been here the last couple of days. What I see you doing is really heroic and 